Hopefully today, everyone here will analyze their spiritual situation and they will get closer to God. Amen. And that's why we're here today. Um, do not be deceived. The devil himself is trying to ruin our lives. He's been trying to ruin our lives since day one. He's tried to completely rule and reign here on earth. Uh, he really does. In fact, the Bible says that he is the the prince of this world. That means that somehow, some way, and we don't know exactly how it happened or why it happened, but somehow, some way, the devil um, got an opportunity to be in charge here on earth. And you're thinking, well, I don't know if that's entirely true, but it is true. And whenever we see chaos and mayhem within our government and within the world and all the wars and everything that's going on with, you know, just lives being destroyed and we're looking at, like, uh, child trafficking and, and just some of the most horrendous things that you could ever possibly imagine. Let's don't forget that the devil himself, thank you very much, the devil himself is trying his best to ruin our lives. Here it is, 1 Peter 5, 8 says, Be sober and vigilant. Why? Because we want you to keep your head on a swivel. If anyone has ever played sports or contact sports, you know that there's always someone who's trying to blindside you so that they can get on the news, right? So that, But that is the devil himself. He's trying his best to make you have a miserable life. Sometimes he does a good job and sometimes he doesn't. Those who are closer to God, though, you see, those who are closer to God are able to not only withstand the temptation from the devil, but they're able to be... Uh, prosper on the other side. Amen. It is it is very, very... This is a very serious matter. When you think of the entire New Testament, most of the New Testament is telling us and trying its best to warn us from the adversary, the devil. Amen. And so certainly, if the Lord is on our side, or let's just say, if we are on the Lord's side, Amen. that we know no matter what happens... He'll see us through. So Amen. the verse says, Be sober and diligent, be, uh, diligent because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. That means that he is trying to eat you alive. Amen. And so the metaphor here looks as if, well, that, that seems a little harsh, but it's true. Yes. He despises humanity Amen. for some reason. Maybe perhaps it's because... God is allowing us to be the recipient of what He wanted to have. Amen. Amen. He wanted to be equal with God. Well, God says that one day we are going to be joint heirs with Christ. Amen. And He does not like that. So today we're going to look in the Scripture in Ephesians chapter 6. We're going to look at just a few verses. Ephesians chapter 6, hopefully you have your Bible because the rest isn't on the screen. I just did that so that way those who didn't have their Bible, uh, they were able to follow along. But there should be Bibles in the middle of the pew, so maybe perhaps you can follow along. Um, it's interesting because if I don't have my glasses, I can't even follow along, so I understand that. So we will do our best to uh, read these verses so that it can be easily understood. Ephesians chapter 6, I want us to understand this, that when you look at society and you look at the problems that are going around in the world, like for instance, we said, we want to pray for the peace of Israel. We want to pray for those individuals who are starting wars uh, because there is a group of individuals on this world, in this world, who love war. Amen. They love war. There are people who profit off of war, big time. There are people who profit off of disease. There are people who profit off just about everything. And most of the time, that is from the devil himself. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12 says this, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. I am so glad that Pastor Carl brought up that testimony this morning. It goes right along with it. See, he was wrestling around with flesh and blood uh, during that testimony. Years ago, he kept trying to knock somebody out. <laughs> See, the idea is certainly, certainly people get into skirmishes and fights and different things, but the devil is behind all of it. Amen. He truly is. 
Because even when we get into an argument with someone else, more than likely somebody there involved in an argument has a lot of pride. And they don't want to give up on that pride. Maybe they've told a lie and they don't want to give up on thinking that they can get away with that lie. And so there's pride and there's friction and there's, there's arguments all around us. Those are all from the devil himself. He's the one who started original sin on earth. He, he was behind it all. He says, well, of course you can have that fruit uh, from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. It won't kill you. You'll be like God. He was behind it all. He told the lie. They believed it. But more than likely, they were trying to decide whether or not that was worth the opportunity to take a bite anyway. But let's look. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. When you look at that, you have to understand that the devil, the serpent, Lucifer himself is behind it all. Amen. Now, we can certainly say a few things, but hear me out before you say amen. We can say that the devil himself is not real. We could say that. Or we could even say the devil doesn't have any power. We could say the devil doesn't have any, any power over me. We hear a lot of people saying that. We hear a lot of people saying that, well, the devil himself can't really hinder me and my walk with the Lord. We can also say that, uh, you know, uh, that, well, the devil himself really isn't trying to destroy my life. He's trying to destroy everybody else's. Look at them compared to me. But if we have that type of mentality, we're wrong. Amen. We are completely wrong because the truth is there is a devil. The truth is there is Lucifer. The truth is there are demons. They are real and they battle against us. Amen. The truth is that they possess people's lives. They possess world leaders. They cause murder and mayhem all around us. Now this isn't to discourage you, but this is to encourage you to get closer to the Lord because He has already defeated the devil. Amen. Amen. And if He's close to you, no matter what happens, you know that the one with you is stronger than the one that's with them. Amen. The one that's within us is stronger than the devil himself. So again, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of this darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. That means the demonic. Right. And we wrestle against them. He wouldn't have wrote it. Amen. You see, Peter wouldn't have said, you know, hey, be careful. The devil's trying to get you. He's trying to eat you alive. They wouldn't have said this if it wasn't true. It is true. So if this is the case, then everybody here needs to listen to the next few verses. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. Do not go into battle against the devil unprepared. Chances are he's going to beat you up. Amen. He's going to pummel you and before you know it, you're going to be down out maybe think of some negative things. Stay with Jesus. Amen. Stay with God. Amen. Take on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to what? Withstand what? In the evil day and having done all to stand. He wants us to stand up and take the blows, but just like Pastor Carl's buddy, he kept getting up. <laughs> and that was discouraging. He kept getting up. The devil's going to try to knock you down, but you just keep getting up. Amen. You have supernatural ability to withstand his wiles and his troublemaking. Amen. Verse 14, Stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth. Well, who is truth? Jesus. Jesus is truth. You have Him on your person at all times. Don't go anywhere. It's like it's, it's so sad. This is so totally true. This Bible right here. This Bible. This particular Bible was missing for a week. One entire week. Now, I've got other Bibles. But this one, this one was missing. I had everybody 
everybody looking for it. Wolfie, did you look for this Bible? John, did you look for this Bible? Jessica, did you look for this Bible? My kids looked for this Bible. Everybody, when we stopped everything, we looked in all the cars. I even looked in Jason's toolbox. I don't know. But I looked everywhere. <laughs> Last night I finally found it, and it was like the lost coin. I just was so grateful and thankful. I didn't even I missed the whole quarter of a football game. Because I was praising the Lord. I was praising the Lord because I had the word of God with me. This is the truth. When it says that the devil's trying to get you, he's trying to get you. When it says that you win, you win. When it says that he's starting wars and all of this stuff, we still win. This is the truth. Amen. So make sure you have the truth with you because Jesus is the truth and Jesus is also the Word of God, isn't He? This is the truth. This is the Word of God. Make sure that you are girded about with the truth, having the blessed breastplate of righteousness. Amen. There is none righteous, no, not one, only God is righteous, only Amen. Jesus is righteous, and therefore you have Him. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. This is what peace is all about, see? There is God, and there is sin, and they're opposed to each other. The only way that mankind can have peace with God to keep God from taking us all out is through Jesus. Amen. Jesus offers peace with God. And that's what we need. We need Jesus so that we don't have punishment. Amen. Praise the Lord, right? And so it's this. It says, Again, having your free feet shod with preparation from the gospel peace above all, above everything, this says this. Above all, taking the shield of faith. Hallelujah. Faith in what? Faith in Jesus. Jesus. Faith that God is going to give you everlasting life. Amen. Faith in the fact that God will, even through the valley of the shadow of death, you should fear no evil because what? God is with you. God is with me. You've got to have faith. You have to have faith that when you close your eyes for the last time on this earth that you will be present in with God. You have to believe that. You have to have faith. You have to have faith that Jesus paid your sin debt. If you don't have that faith, you don't have the most important part. It says again, above all taking the shield of faith, if you do this, Wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Yes. That means when he tries to take you out with fiery darts, right? Yes. That means he's trying just to just to, that you'll be able, it's just like water. It's just you'll be able to just psh, douse out the fiery flames that the devil is trying to put upon you. Yes. You've got to have faith. And it says, verse 17, and take the helmet of salvation. And the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. God. You've got to be ready. You've got to be ready because He's out to get us. And if we're not ready, then He will pummel us. Let's look at this. I want us, so, I want us to look at Luke. Matthew, Mark, Luke. Uh, Luke chapter 4. I want to show you something that is very interesting that no, no major evangelist, well, maybe evangelist, but... Uh, Preachers like to talk about because when you talk about these things, then you really truly need to understand that holiness is something we all need to aspire to receive. Here we go. Verse yes. 4, chapter 4, Luke chapter 4, verse 1. Now this is Jesus, God's only begotten Son. God manifest in the flesh. Watch what happens here. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by what? The Spirit. The Spirit capital Spirit. Capital S. So this is the Spirit of God that is taking Him into the wilderness. God takes Him to the wilderness and watch what happens. He's being there for 40 days. He was what? <coughs> Tempted of the devil. Now a lot of us like to claim and say, well, the devil can't tempt me. <laughs> Oh, contraire, mon frère. Good job. It's, listen, it, he tempted Jesus. Don't think he's not going to tempt you to be full of pride, to be full of division, to, to, to tempt you to follow some sort of a person who's completely going the wrong way. He led 
and, and he was tempted by the devil. And in those days, he did not eat, uh, meaning that he was fasting. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered. Well, I would say this. If you fast for 40 days, chances are you'll be hungry. Why did it say this? Why did it say this? Because it wanted us to know that he was 100% man on his mother's side. But he was 100% God. So he still was hungry. And so therefore, it says, verse 3, And the devil said to him, If thou be the Son of God, command this stone to be made, that it be made bread. So he says to him, There's stones there. You have the power of God. You can make bread. I want you to do it. Can you do it? I don't think you can. Na 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 na. Right? What he was doing was tempting him with pride. He was also tempting him with the fleshly desires, which is, I am hungry. Certainly, on you know, I am hungry. I want to eat. But when someone comes in and tempts you to be full of pride so that you can show off, he says this. Jesus answered and said, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by what? It's in the Old Testament, it's in the New Testament, and it's from this pulpit. You can't live without this. Amen. You can't have everlasting life without the Word of God. Amen. So the devil just tempted him once and that's it. Just like in your life. He's only tempted you maybe once or twice. <laughs> the last 30 minutes maybe. <laughs> Verse 5, and the devil taking him up to a high mountain. Look at this. And he showed him all the, what, all the what, kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. This means he takes him up in the mountain. Not that he's up on a mountain and he's so high up he can see all the kingdoms. It's that he takes him and it's almost like a supernatural experience. Boom, this kingdom, this kingdom, this kingdom, Egypt, all the kingdoms of the whole world. He shows him that and says what? What does he say? And the devil said to him, watch what the devil says, everybody. All this power I will give thee. You see, somehow, somewhere, he received enough power so that he could offer the kingdoms of the world. We're thinking, well, wait a minute. I don't know if it really means that. It really means that. Yeah, and I'll show you in just a moment that I'm Amen. telling the word of God. He says, all this power will I give thee and the glory of them. He's saying the, the, the power and the glory of Egypt I'm going to give you. The power and the glory of Israel I'm going to give you. The power and the glory of Babylon I'm going to give you. This is the devil tempting Amen. Jesus. Saying you can have all of this. It says, here it is. Are you watching? After the colon. For that is delivered unto me. You see that? That means the devil has been delivered the opportunity to give the powers of all the kingdoms, give them to somebody else. Amen. Somehow, some way, when we think about all of the evil, and we think about the Middle East and the fact that they're, you know, weak. Governments give these play, these people money, knowing good and well that they're going to use that money to buy armaments and buy uh, <coughs> missiles and they're going to shoot them at somebody else. Then different <coughs> places will give them money so knowing good and well that they're going to shoot missiles back. You see, and so he says this, I will give you it says, for that is delivered unto me and to whomsoever will I give it. That means that he has the opportunity to give away the power that he has because somebody gave him the power. Now this is pretty deep, but are you understanding what the Bible says here? Yes. This is saying that the devil himself has received a lot of power. Yes. We've got to be prepared. It says, If thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. This is really, we've heard this story, but when you think about what it really means, he's trying to say, Jesus, I know that you are 100% man and you can be tempted and I'm going to tempt you. But he was also 100% God. Amen. You see? Amen. And so he says, Jesus says unto him, 
Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is with, written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and Him only shalt thou serve. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, when the devil wants to tempt you with certain things, you just say, I don't need it. All I need is Jesus. Amen. All I need is Jesus. I don't need to worship anything else. I don't need to covet my neighbor's stuff. I don't need to covet the stuff that's on TV. We're coming up on Christmas and our kids just covet everything, don't they? And we just pretend like we're Santa Claus. And so whatever you covet, well, you all know this, I'm still getting the kids a mattress for Christmas, whether they want it or not. But the idea is because, see, God Himself says, you know what? I don't need all this stuff. I just need to worship God and everything's going to be alright. It's true. It's true. Let's look at a couple more scriptures. Revelation 12. Revelation 12. Revelation. Good old Revelation. Revelation 12. It just says this. So we all know Revelation. We all know who the devil himself is, right? We, we all read the Bible. We all know that his name is Lucifer because we have the King James Bible that says in Isaiah his name is Lucifer. Yeah. And so again, it says Revelation chapter 12, verse 3. And it says, And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, the great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head. That means that again, when you read dragon, who is that? Lucifer, the devil, Satan, but it also means a whole lot of his other minions too. Amen. But let's see what he does here. Verse 4, And his tail drew a third part of the stars of heaven. Another word for stars in this particular chapter is what? Angels. angels. That means that a third part of the angels and did cast them to earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, and the woman was who? Israel. Israel. It says, stood before the woman which which was ready to be delivered for to what? Devour. Devour her child as soon as it was born. Is that what the devil has done? Yeah. When Jesus was born, the first time first the first time the wise man come and says, Where is the Messiah? Yeah. And so and he says, Well, show me where he is so we can and he kills all the kids because he wants to get rid of Jesus. Now see, when you read this, this has already happened, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. That means that the devil himself is already here with a third part of the angels and they are here trying to practice mayhem and madness in your life and everybody else's. Yes, yeah, right. It's bad news if you're not on the Lord's side. Amen. And so most of us keep thinking, well, I'm on the Lord's side and He's got it all covered and I'm just fine. I'm telling you this. I don't want to have any of His temptation, any of His damage to come upon me. Amen. And if it does, I want to be so close to Jesus that everything's going to be all right. Amen. It's so true. This is just the way it is. I mean, not too long ago, I took the... the it's an old guy's name. Grayson. Grayson. Grayson, yeah, my son Grayson. I took him into this place and it was dark as could be. Dark as could be. And so what I did was I stood this, everything's going to be all right. And then I walked away. And he's like, ah! He came over and grabbed a hold of me so tight, I think I still have bruises. And it was two years ago. He grabbed a hold of me so tight that he just wouldn't let go. And I thought, you know what, Jesus, that's what I want to do with you. Amen. When the times of distress and darkness come upon your life, you get so close to Jesus and don't let him go. Even if he says, hey, listen, I got it okay. Will you stand over there? No, please. I want to be close to you. Amen. I want you to get so close to Jesus that no matter what reports the doctors give you, no matter what reports the world gives you, no matter what the national news says, no matter if they say, that the Russians are sending missiles. Everybody, whoop, 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 whoop. That was pretty good, wasn't it? <laughs> if the missiles are coming, they're going to strike you. I just want you to stay. I got Jesus, you know, right here. I mean, I want you to be so secure that nothing that the devil is ever going to dish out is going to put you down and depress you. Amen. 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 Things. Let's look at one more set of verses, chapter 13, verse 4. And then I'm, I'm going to tell you just a little bit before we read this verse. You've all heard about, uh, in the Old Testament, Job himself, right? Do you realize that Job, uh, 
uh, Job was given a whole lot of trouble and madness upon his life. And it's interesting because God didn't do all that damage to Job. No. It was the devil himself. Amen. God gave him permission and said, you're allowed to do certain things, but there's some things you can't do. <laughs> Our God puts restrictions on the devil. Amen. But the thing is, is when you read Job, this is your homework. Go on, read Job chapter 1 and look at verse 13, 17, 19, 16. Just read all chapter 1, will you? <laughs> Satan causes murder and war. Amen. He influences the Sabians to go in and kill Job's kids. Yes. So you're thinking, well, the devil's not behind the wars. Oh, yes, he is. Yes, he, is. he caused the Sabians to go in there and kill his kids. He also caused the Chaldeans to, to go in there and just butcher all the animals and all that stuff. Who caused that? Was it the Chaldeans? Was it just the happen chance that the Sabians and the Chaldeans did it? The devil was behind it all. Amen. Right. If you read in verse 16, you're going to find out that the devil himself causes fire to come down out of heaven. Yeah. And you're thinking, well, I don't know if that's true. We'll read the Bible. It's true and it's going to happen again. Right. If you read verse 19 in Job, you're going to find out that he even controlled nature. He had winds to come in and blow He causes tornadoes, hurricanes. He, and you're thinking, well, wait a second. Can he really do that? I said hurricanes. Yeah. Yeah. If you're from West Virginia, you know it's hurricane, not hurricane. <laughs> or maybe the West Virginians can't pronounce hurricane. Yeah. <laughs> That's all right, because we've we got a lot of West Virginians in here. Yeah. West Virginians, raise your hand. <laughs> Back there, too. Look at that. Kentucky, raise your hand. Oh, we're from all over the world. Where are you from? Virginia. Hey, yeah, there we are. Virginia. There's Virginia. Hey, we're from all over, aren't we? The devil can't be omnipresent. He can't be here and across the country at the same time. But a third of his angels can be all around. They can be all around and they can be causing you trouble. But if you think of this, if He's able to cause all of that, and think of this, when Jesus was here, He was on a boat one day, and a tempest came around, a big old storm came up on the place. And the boat was just going every which way, and the disciples were fearful for their life. You know the story. Amen. We're all going to die, and Jesus is back there taking a nap. Because Jesus knows there ain't nothing the devil's going to do to him that he won't allow. Amen? Amen. And the same goes for us too. That's right. Amen. There's nothing that he can do to you that he doesn't give permission to happen. So therefore, we should be walking around as if we are totally invincible. Amen. I mean, we should be, as long as we're abiding in Christ. Amen. That's the point. That's why he writes this. You arm yourself with the spirit of truth. You arm yourself with all of these things so that you can withstand his trouble. Jesus gets up from the boat and says, Stop it. <laughs> it's great. Peace be still. And the devil couldn't do anything about it. Isn't that beautiful? Amen. Let's look at this again in Revelation 13, verse 4. And it says, People here on the earth, it says, and they worship the dragon which gave power unto the beast, and they worship the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast, and who is able to make war with them? They are saying this, We can't fight against this type of power. We can't do it. Who can make war against the beast? And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue for forty and two months, and he opened up his mouth and blasphemy against God, to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle, and them that dwell in heaven. That means that he was saying blasphemous things about who, what? The, the, the angels, the two-thirds of the angels that he left behind. It's like, uh, you know, he's cursing them. And so verse 6, And he opened up his mouth and blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints. Amen. That's what he's doing now. 
He's trying to get you to not focus on Jesus. Amen. He's trying to get you not to come and worship Him. Yes. This is one of the most grand things that we could ever possibly do, and that is to go to the church house and worship His name together with Christians. What an opportunity! And you know what? People all over just say, it's not worth it to me. Amen. If you can't worship the Lord on earth, what makes you think He's going to give you the opportunity to worship Him in heaven? Amen. I am saying this, you make sure that you worship Him, but listen, and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship Him, meaning they're worshiping who? The devil. Whose names are not written in the book of life uh, of the Lamb slain from the foundations of the world. That means that everybody who isn't worshiping Jesus is going to worship Him. Amen. But I'm saying this, we are here today to proclaim that Jesus Christ is our Lord. Amen. And there is great power in your God. Amen. There is great power because not only does He have the power to withstand the wiles of the devil, He gives us the opportunity to withstand the wiles of the devil. And when I say the wiles, I mean the temptations. The temptations to sin. The temptations to argue, the temptations to have you know, unpure thoughts, the temptations to, to again have pride well up inside you, the, the temptation to believe the lies that the devil wants to portray upon us. Yes. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, this world is not going to be completely blown up because of some World War III. No. <laughs> this place is going to be world without end. Jesus Christ is going to come and He's going to rescue us from the dead if we abide in Him. Again, it says, you abide in Christ, He'll abide in you. Amen? Amen? So my, again, encouragement for you today is to understand this. The devil's real. The demons are real. Jesus Christ is real. Amen. God, the maker of all things, He's real. If Jesus provides peace for us with God and God through Jesus provides us everlasting life. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Makes me want to sing and shout for Jesus. Amen. Would you like to do that before we leave?